Welcome back everyone. In this video, we take a look at the all new EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. So for those who are new here, I'm Jason and this beast, this is the Everlander. It's our self-made overland truck that we built ourselves back in 2016. And from the very beginning, we've always strived to be 100% solar electric powered with the exception of locomotion. Our whole kitchen is electric and we're not even cheating, not even a little bit with a little bit of propane and then a token easy bake oven. We use regular household electric cooking appliances, induction cooktops, electric kettle, instant pot, sous vide, a convection air fryer combo, just to name a few. Not to mention our biggest consumers, the isotherm refrigeration unit and our separate angle deep freeze. And it doesn't stop in the kitchen. We need to have lots of energy for our power hungry video editing computers, network attached storage device, network infrastructure, Starlink internet, hot water heater, even a 3D printer, not to mention all the fans, pumps, air compressors, and winches going on behind the scenes. And this isn't just a trophy camper for weekending either. This has been our full-time home on wheels for the last five years, taking us to the Arctic Ocean, as far north as you can drive in Canada, south through Central America, and now headed for the southern tip of South America. And to keep all this alive, we need one metric boatload of power. And this is what that looks like. As you can see in our storage compartment here, we have 20 lithium iron phosphate cells with a combined total capacity of 11.5 kilowatt hours. And of course, we have to have a ton of solar up on the roof to keep this all charged up. Now I know this might come across as bragging, but I'm really just trying to paint you guys a picture of how dependent we are on reliable renewable power and how much power we actually use. So hopefully I can inspire you and show you what is possible. And as an early adopter of lithium in the RV, I've made lots of videos evangelizing lithium iron phosphate batteries and our expanding solar array. And because of that, I'm constantly getting emails from battery manufacturers asking that I review their little gimmicky 200 watt hour battery box. But I just can't get behind those no name bread toaster sized battery boxes. A majority of them are too small to have any utility in a real overlanding rig. And so with the exception of the two kilowatt hour Blue Eddy review that I did a couple years back, I've turned them all down. But recently one of the top brands in the portable battery realm reached out and asked if I'd review their brand new unit for summer 2023, the EcoFlow Delta II Max. So now it's time for one of my classic super slow ASMR unboxings. Ain't nobody got time for that. 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 Okay, let's uh, take this thing inside and put it through its paces. So here it is. This is the Delta II Max, a 2048 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery bank with a built in inverter, MPPT solar charge controller, USB charge outputs, high speed grid charger, transfer switch, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, bunch of other good other things. So uh, let's go through some of these features here really quickly. On the front, we have a very excellent colorful segmented LCD display that's super easy to read both indoors and out. It shows the state of charge, the time remaining, the watts in, watts out, and a bunch of other little icons here that show the status of the USB outputs and the AC output and so on. It has four USB-A ports across the top here and two Type-C fast charging uh, so you can charge your phone or laptop. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time showing you how to charge things with USB. You know the drill. You plug it in, it charges. Uh, but these two on the left are regular USB-A 12 watt. The two on the right, the blue ones, are fast charge USB-A. We'll do up to 18 watts. And then the two USB-Cs will negotiate 5, 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts PD power delivery at up to 100 watts per port. Actually, I am going to try out the USB. In my last video, I complained that I don't have a USB-C PD charger sufficient to charge my Surface 7. So I'm going to use this 
USB watt meter, and we're going to see what this thing can do. So there you go. Charging at 50 watts, approximately. I think that's about the maximum that this thing can do. Or perhaps with its current state of charge, that's the most it can do. But cool. Okay. And around this side, we have two expansion ports for optional add-on battery modules that you can uh, triple your battery capacity up to six kilowatt hours. Uh, obviously, these two big contacts on the sides are the main power connections, and then the smaller pins here in the middle are communication lines so that this main unit can detect the presence of the add-on battery modules and uh, then calculate the extra battery capacity for its state of charge calculations and that sort of thing. It's probably also used to uh, balance the external batteries before electrically connecting them. Uh, and of course, there's gonna be some other safety functionality on those pins too. But EcoFlow didn't send me any of these batteries, so I can't test these. And then around the back, we have the six 120 volt AC outlets. Uh, these can deliver 2,400 watts. Uh, in total and up to 4,800 watts in surge power for starting those big inductive loads that have big inrush current. Then beneath that we have two 5521 barrel connections. Those will handle three amps each and then right next to that a cigarette style car outlet. Again 12.6 volts but this one will handle up to a 10 amp load. Now something that really bugged me about the Blue Eddy unit was that the only way to turn on the AC outlets or the USB or anything was to go in on the touch screen and go and press the, the buttons on the screen, on the touch screen. But that thing was nearly impossible to see outdoors and so it was tough to figure it out. And so thankfully EcoFlow has physical clicky buttons that you can click to turn the AC inverter 12 volt outputs and the USB outputs on and off and they have a really nice little LED indicator on there so that you can see that it's on. It's the simple things. Then underneath this flap we have the charge inputs. Uh, something that's new with this model is it actually has dual 500 watt solar inputs for up to a thousand watts of solar charging. But what if you're not a fan of free renewable energy falling from the sky? Well they've got you covered there too. Included in the box is a big fat boy IEC cable that you can plug in here and then run the other end to your nearest coal-fired grid outlet and charge it up to 1,800 extreme watts. Then here we have a uh, charge speed switch that toggles between full speed charging and a slower speed which you can set with, with inside the app. And then here is a little pop-out fuse breaker thing in case anything catastrophic happens, that will pop out and you can reset it right there. The standout feature for me is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity that allows you to monitor and control everything from the very nicely polished EcoFlow app. It's available for both Android and iOS and setting this up was foolproof. I just opened the app, Bluetooth proximity detected that the Delta 2 was nearby and was ready to add. So you just click add, just like AirPods, and then uh, then you choose your Wi-Fi network, and then it's connected. And then from there you can choose your homepage style. There's currently two different dashboards to choose from. Both offer the exact same information, but in a little bit different ways. And you might see me switching between these throughout the video. And then even though this thing was just released, there was already a firmware update available, which adds some energy management functionality and that too was really painless. You just need to click upgrade and it handles it by itself. So let's give you a quick tour of the app here. As you can see, this is the home screen. It shows your input wattage all at zero at the moment and then the output wattage. And from here, of course, you can switch any of the inputs or rather any of the outputs on and off. So you don't need to get down on your knees on the floor and wherever and click the button. You can do it from the app, across the house, or in fact, across the world. All right, and let's have a quick uh, tour of the settings here. Of course, you can rename your unit to anything you want, and that will show up here on the main, the main, main screen. If you had multiple, they'll all show up here. Uh, you can enable 
and disable the beep. I prefer it disabled. And then uh, energy management. Here you can set the maximum charge level, which will save a little bit of wear and tear on your batteries if you set it to 90%, let's say. And you can set the maximum discharge level. So you'd set that to 26%, and then uh, it'll never discharge below that. So if you want to save a buffer just in case as an emergency, then you could come in here and lower it right to zero. So that's really cute. And then the backup reserve, I think that's what they just added. Uh, that is a really neat function because you can have this plugged into the wall and it will only charge up to this setting, let's say 75% from the grid, and then uh, it won't charge any higher than that unless you hook up your solar panels and then it will charge up to 100. So that's great as a uh, as a way to use solar power to power your devices unless the situation gets dire and it can't keep up. Let's say it's let's say you said it's 37%, it would always stay at 37% or greater from the grid so that you had that little buffer for if the power went out. But uh, most of the time it's going to charge up above that with the solar and power your refrigerator, for example, with solar power most of the time. So that's really cool. Then uh, in here you could set the AC charging speed, so when you plug in the grid, currently it's maxed out at 1800 watts, but you can set it to anything lower, all the way down to 200 watts. So it'll charge a little bit slower, but it's a lot easier on the batteries and on the internal circuitry, running a lot cooler. And next we'll look at car input. These are the maximum charge rates that the Delta will charge from the included cigarette lighter to XT60 charge cable. So I'll plug this in here and down there so you guys can see. As, uh, as that's plugged in, we'll check now the solar input. As you can see, it's ramping up there. 73 watts, and that's going to max out at about 100 watts, a little better. So there it is. And uh, that's done just to limit the load on your car's uh, cigarette lighter outlet. Most are only going to have a 10 amp fuse on there. Now this is going to be a very slow charge method, uh, because if you do the math, 100 watts into 2000 watts of battery, it's going to be at least 20 hours of running your car with a cigarette lighter plugged in to charge this, and even worse if you were to set this to 4 amps, for example. That's going to go to hundreds of hours to charge totally. So I wouldn't use that most of the time, but just so you know, it is there. And next we have the generator auto on-off controls. Uh, that's if you want to use the EcoFlow Smart Generator. It's a gasoline-powered generator, and it will automatically turn off and turn back on at these settings. Next, we'll look at X-Boost. X-Boost! That's the uh, name that they've given their little trick to be able to power resistive heating loads that would normally be too much for this thing to handle. Uh, you can power up to 3,400 watts, or what would normally be 3,400 watts, and what it does is it just reduces the voltage on the AC outputs so that it, it brings the total wattage down to the manageable 2,400 watts. So you'd only want to use that for hair dryers and our electric oven, for example. It'll still work, it'll, it'll just take longer to heat up, but uh, at least you'll be able to use it. And next here we have auto timeouts. As you can see, uh, you can set the timer or the delay for how long this thing will stay on with no activity, no usage, before it will turn off. So the overall unit timeout will turn the whole thing off after one hour or four hours or never. Then there's also the screen timeout, which I've set to never so you guys can see it here but uh, normally five minutes should be sufficient. And then the AC timeout, how long it will run before the AC inverter is switched off. You can set that to never if you'd like. Uh, you know, if you have your refrigerator on there, maybe you want to set it to 12 hours, just 
uh, because if it was set to 30 minutes and the fridge didn't run for 30 minutes because it was cool enough, then this unit might turn off. So it's nice to have the ability to set that to whatever you want. And again, the same for uh, the 12 volt outputs. And then here we have the firmware update option. As you can see, mine is up to date, as I mentioned. Uh, and then there's specifications and temperature, some other mundane options, the homepage style, where you can switch between this one or this one. So the sun has just come out. It's a beautiful sunny day here. So let's get to testing the solar inputs. Uh, as you guys know, I love my XT60s and this has them built in, so that's great. These come down from our rooftop. So let's plug in the first one here into the solar input number one. Hopefully you guys will be able to see on the screen here, the input wattage will climb, but I'll also throw the screen recording up here. See this little graph here along the top showing the input climbing. That's really nice. And uh, solar one shown here in the middle in that gray box is at 499 watts already. So now we'll plug in the second one. As you can see, the solar uh, MPPT algorithm ramps up to the 500 watt input, and now both of them, both inputs are maxed at 500 watts, which is the uh, maximum this unit will take in. So yeah, we're taking in nearly a kilowatt here. And of course, if you want, you can still plug in your uh, grid cable and charge it even faster. There we go. Grid starting to climb. One point eight kilowatts. One point nine two kilowatts. So longtime viewers will know I'm not really your typical unboxing channel. Instead of sitting here and going full ASMR describing how this box smells. I'd rather give you a sense of how this thing will really perform in a variety of real world situations. That's exactly what I did with the Blue Eddy battery, and while it has been a couple of years since I did that video, and technology has surely advanced, this is still a pretty comparable unit size-wise. So in that video, I fully charged the 2 kilowatt hour battery, and then took you through a full day of cooking all of our meals without adding any additional power to the battery. I think that's a really good real-world example because it gives you an idea of what this thing could do if the power went out and you needed to cook electrically and so that's what we're gonna do here. Cooking all the same meals again, but sort of in a rapid fire abbreviated speed run. Good morning, today is tomorrow. Well, it's actually four days from now, but uh, got the EcoFlow all charged up, so let's get to testing. So just so you guys know, uh, this cord runs to our transfer switch. So when I plug this in, that will power up all of our interior appliances and plugs or most of them. And uh, so now we can get started with the testing. So I've got a liter of water in the kettle here. As you can see from the app here, it should be pulling just over a thousand watts or one kilowatt. I also ground some coffee here, but the consumption was so low it didn't even pull anything on the meter. Okay, so getting that water up to a boil consumed 90 watt hours and our battery is now down to 95%. So now I'm gonna use our AeroPress and make a couple of cafe Americanos for Kara and I. Okay, next I'm gonna preheat this little mini waffle maker. It's pulling 341 watts, and then I'll get cracking on the batter here. We're going to be making Kara's super easy low carb waffles. For that we need some cream cheese, two eggs, almond flour, baking powder, baking soda, then a little bit of coconut oil, and this is enough batter to make one, two, three, four waffles. And that consumed 40 watt hours. And now the EcoFlow battery is down to 92%. Okay, next we're gonna fry up some eggs. I'm gonna get the pan going on the induction cooktop here. Setting number five, a little bit of butter, four eggs. Okay, so the EcoFlow app shows we're pulling 530 watts. And I'm just gonna put a plate on this to keep in some of the heat. Okay, 530 watts, a little over five minutes. Uh, the kilowatt says we've consumed 60 watt hours in total and the EcoFlow batteries are down to 
And lastly, I'm going to do up some rolled oats. So do that, we'll get some water up to a boil. Looks like that's pulling 1.35 kilowatts on setting number nine. Now that that's come to a boil, we'll add the oats and reduce the heat to three. Looks like that's pulling a little over 500 watts now. And almost forgot the craisins again. Okay, so that's done. Looks like we've consumed 10 watt hours for the oats. So now I'm just gonna plate this up for Instagram and make it look all pretty. And that concludes our over the top breakfast. As you can see, we still have 83% of the EcoFlow battery remaining, so we'll see you at lunchtime. Okay, time for lunch. I'm gonna make up some tuna melts here. For that, I'm gonna mix this can of tuna in herbed olive oil, red onion, celery, some pickle, put that all in here, then some lime juice, mustard, mayo, salt, pepper, and a dash of hot sauce. And mix that all up. Next, I'll get some bread in the toaster. As you can see, a little bit over 1700 watts on the output there. Okay, toast is done. Looks like it used 140 watt hours. Now I'll just pile this up on here, top it off with some cheese, and then back in the oven on broil. As you can see, the broiler is pulling 934 watts. All right. That's looking good. We'll take these out of here. Smells good. And it looks like that used 60 watt hours to broil the cheese all melty. And that's lunch made. As you can see, we still have 71% of our battery left. That was lots. So we'll see you at supper time. Okay, time for supper. And we're going to be making salmon and quinoa abuda bowls. So to get this going, I've got a chunk of salmon that came out of the ocean vacuum sealed like this. So that's super convenient for sous vide. So I'll pop that in the water bath here and get the sous vide going and set this to 54 degrees for one hour. Then switching over to the EcoFlow app, you can see it's pulling 840 watts, but that's only going to be heating like this for a few minutes until this insulated pot or cooler is up to temperature and then it'll take nearly no power circulating the water and just blipping the heater once in a while to maintain that temperature. As you can see on the EcoFlow app that uh, is giving the time remaining a little bit of a workout there. Okay so the salmon is done looks like that consumed 210 watt hours so I'll unplug this and set that aside for now. Next I'm going to use the instant pot to get a cup of quinoa going Add a cup of water and I'll get that started. This just needs to come up to temperature and then hold it for one minute. So that's done now. Uh, as you can see, the Instant Pot uses 633 watts to come up to temperature and uh, the overall consumption on the kilowatt was 60 watt hours. So I'm going to set this aside here too and get started on some roasted veggies. As you can see, Kara has diced these up so beautifully. So I'll just add some oil and toss them and then spread them on this baking sheet and then into the onion at 350. Okay, looks like this is stabilized at 1,770 watts. Okay, those are looking good. It looks like we used about 300 watt hours to uh, do the vegetables here. So I'll wrap these up and then we'll finish this off with some steamed broccoli on the induction here. Okay, so we'll set these on the induction and set these to setting number nine. As you can see, that's pulling 1,330 watts. Okay, that's looking good. So as you can see, the total consumption on the uh, broccoli here was 110 watt hours. Now to plate this all up. We'll start off with some quinoa here in the bowl and then add some roasted veggies there on top, some broccoli. Then we'll get the salmon out and split that up. Then I'll just drizzle that with Kara's honey miso mustard glaze and then garnish with some sesame seeds. And there it is, a really hearty, healthy meal on a cool spring day. Cool or cold, couldn't decide. Okay, now for dessert, we're gonna make Kara's low carb peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. So I'm gonna start with some peanut butter, add some softened butter, two eggs, the rest of a bag of sugar, baking soda, vanilla, give that a pre-mix, then some coconut flour, mix again, chocolate chips, and mix once more. And I'll just divide these into nine little plops, give them a smush, and then into the onion at 350. As you can see, this thing still pulls 1,770 watts. Okay, 
Those actually bake up really quickly, and it looks like we only used 200 watt hours on those. Now, because of the high sugar content, these should only be consumed by cyborgs. So I thought we would have drained this thing pretty close to zero by now, but we still have 21% remaining on the EcoFlow battery. So I'm going to dump the rest of it into the most delicious solar battery I can think of, caramelized onions. Whenever we have a burst of surplus solar power, I often grab a few extra onions, slice them up, and then cook them over low heat for a long time. Then when they're golden and tasty, I put them in a little tray and freeze them into this loaf and then I slice it up and we have them ready to go for a sauce or whatever we need to flavor up. And as you can see, I've rigged up my magic arm to record the exact reading when the EcoFlow battery runs out. There we go, it just shut down. And uh, reviewing the video, I can see we consumed another 330 watt hours, bringing our grand total for all these cooking loads to 1,610 watt hours, or 1 1.6 kilowatt hours. Keep in mind, we did all of this cooking without adding any additional power back into the EcoFlow battery. But of course, if you had a couple of solar panels, you could be recharging all day. Or better yet, utilizing that incoming power as you're making it, and then recharge the battery when you don't need to use it, and then the battery will have the capacity to last you through the night. And that's exactly what we're going to do in our next video. I'm going to try and take this Colombian farmhouse completely off-grid with the EcoFlow Delta II Max and these two solar panels. I'm hopeful that in spite of being in the middle of rainy season with sun and cloud and rain almost every day, that we'll still have enough energy to keep this house online, keep the fridge going, and do all of our cooking purely with solar power and the EcoFlow. I'm really excited for this one, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell on. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So, at the time of recording this, I've only had my hands on this thing for about a week. And speaking for myself anyway, I can't stand those review videos where they literally get the thing out of the box, give it some lightweight, shallow testing, and then refer you to their affiliate link down in the description. So, to honestly earn your views, I've tried to pack as much hard testing into the last few days as I could. Every day, fully charged to fully discharged, getting as much hands-on time with this thing as I could. So let's go through my findings and my opinions on it so far. One of the questions I saw a lot online was, how loud is this thing? Or even some other review videos uh, reviewing an earlier generation of this model, uh, complaining about the fan noise. This video, for example. It's loud, really loud. But that's very subjective. In this video, I suspect you've barely heard the fans at all, and that's largely due to the way we have our mics rigged up, and how we treat the recorded audio in post-processing. This mic will pick up the audio differently than the mic up on the camera, and the mic on the table will pick it up even more differently. But in an effort to be completely transparent, this next video segment will be recorded with this Zoom H1, on the tabletop, equidistance from my mouth, and the Delta II Max. It's the best mic setup I have to give you a real feel for the, how this thing sounds. Okay, this is the sound of silence, or as close as possible as I can get it. You may hear my laptop fan and the fridge running possibly, but this is silence. Now I'm going to grab the uh, power cord here. As you can see on the front of the unit, it is not charging. So I'll plug that in, and then I'll pull up the app here and go into the settings. And as you can see, I've got the AC charge speed set to 200 watts. So now when I go back to the uh, main dashboard screen, you can see the input here climbing to reach the 200 watt target. Now this is effectively silent. I don't even hear electrical hum or anything, and the fans don't run at this speed, as, as far as I can tell. I've never noticed them come on. And so now, I will increase the charge speed to 500. Still no electrical hum that I can discern, and the input is climbing. 
Okay, I've let this run for about five minutes and the fans aren't coming on. Now, to be fair, it is a cool day here. And I imagine these are temperature controlled. And so if you're in a very hot climate, they may come on at this charge rate. But at this time, they're perfectly silent. They're, there's no noise from this thing at all. Anything you are hearing is going to be my laptop fan. And there's a little bit of drizzle outside you might hear. Okay, so the next test, I will ramp this up to 900 watts. Now surely the fans will come on. No, maybe not. Well, it's been a few minutes and it still hasn't started the fan, so I'm going to crank it. Get the... There we go. I believe this is full speed for these fans. This is about as loud as I've ever heard them. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and uh, the fan speeds aren't getting any faster. This. I was, I was pretty sure this was max speed, and it is. Uh, so, here it is. This is the sound of my voice, unedited, next to the box with its fans on full tilt, with the tabletop mic. Maybe now for fun I'll switch to the camera mic, which is a very directional shotgun mic, so that might intensify it a little bit. And then my lapel mic. This is the sound of my voice next to the box. Now I will back it down to say 900. So there we go, that's about half charge speed and you can hear the fans have spooled down so it seems to have stabilized there the uh, charger is charging at about half speed and I would guess that these fans are about half speed and again this is all recorded with the uh, tabletop mic here equidistant from both of the sound sources approximately and now if we turn it down a little further say to 500 watts There we go, so it just stabilized. As you can see, it's still charging at 500-ish watts, but uh, the fans are no longer needed at that speed, so they're completely off now. Now granted, this demonstration still has some flaws. Even the device you're listening on will affect how this sounds. A phone or little earbuds are going to sound much more high-pitched than if you're in a treated room with subwoofers and an LFE in the floor. So, in conclusion, I'll give you my opinion as someone who's heard a lot of fans and often replaces stock fans with quieter aftermarket ones. In all the cooking and testing that I've done over the last week, these fans have a much more pleasant low tone than many others that I've heard. It's like a low drone as compared to a high-pitched squealing. Uh, so, certainly quieter than any of the other cooking appliances that we had sitting next to it, uh, even our kettle is louder than the uh, than the fans in the EcoFlow Delta. And it's absolutely quieter than the alternative gas generators. In case you're not familiar, this is what that sounds like. And if you're using this thing in an environment where even a small amount of noise from the fans would bug you, for example, next to your bed running a CPAP machine, remember that you can always turn the charge rate down, which will keep the fans at a very low speed or even off. In fact, I can't think of very many scenarios when you would need to charge this thing at maximum speed anyway. It's far less stressful on the batteries and the charge circuitry to run the charger at a moderate speed so that everything runs cooler 
and thus the fans don't even need to run. So it just occurs to me that I haven't shown the UPS functionality where you can power your device from the grid until the grid goes down and then the EcoFlow will take over and automatically transfer the load to the battery power. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use our sous vide because it is not as loud as a hairdryer. Okay, so I've got the uh, Nova plugged into the back of the EcoFlow Delta. And so now when I power this up, you can hear that going. And of course you can see the output on the app there. And now when I pull the power input to the EcoFlow Delta, it just keeps running. The input power drops to zero, output to 870, stays at 870. Plug it back in. Input matches the output. Unplug it. Keeps running. Plug it back in. Unplug it. I could see this being a very handy feature if you live in a place where you experience frequent power outages or load shedding. You could have your refrigerator or CPAP machine plugged in and when the power goes out, it would just transfer those loads over to the battery and when the grid comes back online, it would transfer them back to the grid and simultaneously recharge its internal batteries. So, as I mentioned earlier, I've been intensively testing this thing for the last week or so, and in that time I've recharged, mostly with solar, although I have done some grid charging, and just like all the cooking I showed earlier, all of the watt hours consumed were recorded on this spreadsheet. I'll link to that in the description, and that way any further testing that I do can be added to that spreadsheet after this video is released, and then you can see it there too. But, like I said, I mostly recharged with solar, and the solar panels were performing so well that the battery was often charged by mid-morning and I needed to find things to burn power on. So I actually used our sous vide machine to heat a big tub of water, and then we used that hot water to do some deep cleaning laundry on some of our uh, blankets and other big laundry items. Anyway, the result of all that capacity testing was quite good. For example, all of the cooking loads I showed earlier all totaled 1.6 kilowatt hours, which is pretty good considering how hard I was on it with all of those heavy loads. And it looks even better when compared to the Blue Eddy unit, which I tested a couple years ago, which only lasted to 1.47 kilowatt hours. And all of that efficiency testing is all available for you to review on the spreadsheet in a, linked in the description, but uh, all in all, the efficiency is very good. In the high 80s, pushing 90% when discharging. And this is among the best in class when compared to similar units. Another big feather in the cap for this unit over the Blue Eddy is the auto timeout features I showed you guys. You can set individual timeouts for the whole system. The screen timeout, AC timeout, and the 12 volt timeout. And that gives you great flexibility and puts you in control of how you want to save the power and what works best for you. Uh, this was a big problem I had with the Blue Eddy unit because it had no timeout and if you forgot it on it would just sit there and discharge its batteries over the course of a couple days and then it was empty. And worst yet, if you had a solar panel plugged in and it just got a blip of solar for just a moment, it would turn on, but then if the incoming charge was less than its own consumption, it would still stay on and then discharge itself completely. So, hats off to EcoFlow for some really nice timeout functionality that puts you in control of when you want it to turn on or off. So, in order to provide a well-rounded review, I tried to think of some things that I could be critical of, but it wasn't that easy. Uh, if I had to nitpick, I'd say one thing that I'd like to see improved is higher output 12 volt DC connectors, because this has the two little barrel connectors, but they only provide three amps, and then the cigarette lighter, which can do 10 amps, but that's still less than ideal if you're using this as your primary power unit in a conversion van, for example, where you want to power your lighting and fans and refrigeration. It would be really nice to see a couple of uh, XT60 connectors that could handle some higher current outputs. Something else I'd like to see is to have some level of reporting in the app. It would be very nice to see the total kilowatt hours that the solar panels produced on a daily basis, perhaps a running total. And while it does show the current watts that you're currently producing in the little wavy line at the top, 
Uh, it would be really nice to have a summary of everything you've made over the last day or week. I think that would be very interesting and a very easy change for them to implement in the app because the unit is uh, Wi-Fi connected already. So there it is. I think that's all the time we have for this video, but I'm really looking forward to our next one where hopefully I'll be able to take this Colombian farmhouse completely off grid and power everything from the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max and these two solar panels. So make sure you're subscribed for that one. If you have any questions or suggestions of things you'd like to see tested, leave a comment down below and I'll try and answer that in the next video. A big, big thank you to EcoFlow for sending this sample unit out for review at no cost to me. If you've enjoyed this video and feel I've earned it, there are affiliate links in the description that'll give you a big discount on your order at either the EcoFlow store or on Amazon. As always, I'd like to thank our supporting channel members, especially this month when I've been a little bit preoccupied and busy making this video and not able to make the members only videos at the same level as I'd like to. So thank you guys very much for your ongoing support, especially our Elon tier member, Furious George. He's once again fronting the Franks for our Starlink service this month. If you're interested in supporting this channel and having your name listed among these legends, consider hitting the join button down below and check out the membership options that are available to you there. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Take two. Ain't nobody got time for that.